Well, sometimes you see a show with an interesting idea that was cancelled fairly quickly, and you think, eh, that's a shame. You're going to show me your new game? It started off as a game, Auto Man. Now it's, it's real. The series might have had a good setup, a charismatic cast and characters, and interesting plots, or at least two out of three. But even with a handful of episodes, they still stick with you. Auto Man. Auto Man isn't, as you might believe, Elon Musk's wet dream, but was actually a short-lived 1983 series created by Glenn A. Larson, a successful TV producer with a very long list of popular and not so popular series to his name. In fact, just in browsing his catalogue, I can guarantee a fair few series created by Larson will eventually be covered by a Stam Fine review at some point. One of Larson's best-loved series of the early 80s was his series Knight Rider, which ran between 1982 and 1986. It was a show about a cool, futuristic car that spoke, and a guy with high-tech hair who drove around jumping over things, fighting crime. Knight Rider's immediate success inspired several other series, and inspired does sound nicer than rip off. But if you can't rip off your own series, then I mean, man, why bother? The 1982 movie Tron hadn't been a massive box office success, but the visuals had impressed most people who saw it. And after discussions with Tron's producers, Larson came up with Auto Man. Part of the fun of watching some Larson shows was working out which movie in a completely non-legally binding way provided the inspiration for his latest creation. Auto Man. That's me. Tron was about a man who went into a computer, and Automan was a computer character who came into the real world. Larson concocted the idea of a milk toast cop by day and hobbyist video game designer by night who accidentally somehow created a super-powered solid hologram avatar out of thin air. There's also a floaty glowy thing that can conjure up a Lamborghini out of thin air, and, well, hey man, Knight Rider sounded pretty silly to TV executives until they saw the ratings. Larson had recently moved from Universal to 20th Century Fox and for the fall 1983 season had sold several new shows, with Auto Man being picked up by ABC and broadcast from December of that year. Auto Man the show decides, hey, origin stories are for schmucks, and the entire creation of Auto Man is explained away in a quick recap before each episode began. Walter Nebiker is a cop, but according to his captain, he's too nerdy to be let out onto the streets. And so he fights crimes using a newfangled thing called a computer. When you're at that computer, you don't know anyone else exists. In 1983, computers were still a very new thing to most people. So Automan has to explain a lot of concepts that we now take for granted. I knocked over a glass of water into this whatever it is. Uh, the keyboard. While working on personal projects like video games and AI, Nebuka somehow manages to automagically create a hologram crime fighter out of headshots of leads from other shows produced by Glenn A. Larson. I tried this once with pictures of Tom Cruise, and all I ended up with was a lot of targeted ads for dentists. A hologram. That's a very fancy word for a three-dimensional picture that when perfected can be made to look real. Automan appears out of thin air, since if you have enough electricity, you can apparently conjure up artificial people. Just as now, if you have enough stolen electricity and graphics cards, you can conjure up artificial money. That's the way computers work. Automan, short for Automatic Man, will show up when needed and has a bunch of random powers he can use to help Walter solve crimes. You've programmed me to observe other people and do whatever they can do as well as they can do it. He can allow Walter to enter him. Oh, come on, not like that. Where Walter can wear Automan like a suit. Yeah, that's not much better. Hey, hey, hey. I I'm you. You can never be me and together they can walk through walls and be impenetrable to bullets. There's the glowy pixel pixie cursor, who can render Automan appropriate disguises and also vehicles such as this, the auto car, or a plane, or a helicopter, or a bike, or whatever. Digital creep cursor, but despite not having any hands, is a bit handsy. Good evening, Auto Man. Good evening. Looking good, Auto. Thank you, it's good to see you again. Automan can communicate with computers and electronic devices, and he can assimilate information from other computers or videotapes. He's also very chummy with anything electronic, including video game characters. Pac-Man, we're close friends. Now, Donkey Kong is an animal. Watching Automan try out things he's learned from pop culture is one of the series' highlights. Whether he's learning to dance from Saturday Night Fever, 
or getting dark ideas from watching Dirty Harry type movies. Go ahead. Do the world a favour. Like rental cars, Curse's vehicles don't really follow the laws of physics. Power grows weaker. Of course, all of this requires access to phenomenal amounts of electricity, so Automan is often more available at nights, at least in early episodes, ostensibly because there's less call on electricity at nights. There's never going to be enough power available during the day when everyone else is up and using my sources. But also because the electrically charged Automan spends his off hours in the daytime trying unsuccessfully to raise goldfish. That and it took them a while to work out how to do special effects in daylight. The plots are fairly standard for the genre, they aren't anything to write home about. Hey hey, we're not done yet. Walter begins investigating a crime and Automan comes in and moves things forward, often saving the day. There's a mix of plots familiar to the 80s action adventure genre. All I have to do is find the connection. Now it's beginning to make sense. 48 hours. Small towns run by corrupt officials, people seeking revenge, extortion, crime lords, big drug deals, some espionage storylines, anything and everything so long as they can get Automan to appear. Everywhere except, funnily enough, underwater. She must have been a hot little number before the fire went out. While the 80s shows aimed at younger audiences have a reputation for being high on action but light on killings, the ending of the pilot episode has Cursor conjuring up a fake plane used by the villains to escape, and then Cursor derezzes the plane mid-air. I mean cool, but savage. Also for such a light-hearted show, there's actually a reasonably high body count when compared to, say, The A-Team, but it's not as high as some of the more blood-soaked episodes of Webster. Of Walter's co-workers, only Roxanne is aware of who Automan is, and she seems to spend most of her time worried about Automan being seen, like having to explain to Auntie Beryl why she should use the curtains in her bedroom. You just keep plugging instead of playing those silly computer games, and you're sure to prove the captain wrong. Lieutenant Curtis is the seen-it-all before cop working with Walter in the computer section. He recognises the value of computers and police work. And you put an end to it. A great job by a great cop. Captain, I didn't do it by myself. Oh, you see that? That's why Curtis is a great cop. Loyalty. On the other hand, while Captain Boyd thinks the world of Curtis's policing abilities, he often dismisses Walter as a nerdy loser whose name he often mispronounces. Us? Not us, Nebus, you. You're at the top of the list. To Curtis and the captain, Automan is Walter's contact in the Fed's Agent Otto J. Mann. Agent Mann, Justice Department, Office of Special Psychic Investigation, Washington, D.C. <laughs> oh, my God. When he's not being mistaken for a footstool, Automan is likely to ignore Walter's instructions and go it alone, because otherwise it would be a very short show. Okay, so we won't tell him. Also, a show called Walter Man wouldn't have the same zing. This is the story of Walter Nebaker, doing what he likes best, fighting crime in the streets. The look of Auto Man was heavily influenced by Tron, and thanks to the involvement of that film's producers, the expertise to realise the complex effects was there. Despite the computer trappings of the show, computers weren't used to create most of the effects. Cursor and his manifestations of vehicles and props was created by traditional animation optically composited. The glowing panels and strips on the autocar and helicopter and other items was a simpler in-camera effect. Props were covered in strips of reflective material and a bright light shone from the side of the camera with a beam splitter close to the camera reflecting the light onto the surface covered in the material, which would bounce back directly into the camera, which is a very long way of saying, oh look, shiny. Automan's suit was probably the most complicated effect, and you can see why he appears less and less in his natural state. The suit was covered in panels of the same reflective material, which would then be used to, well look, it's quite an involved process making mats and chroma key and what have you, but the glowing panels would be replaced in post-production with a sparkly background, so Automan looked like the electric cowboy mated with the Christmas tree on a drunken dare. You know, from a room like this, a hologram could rule the world. <laughs> Easy, Otto. Holograms aren't exactly what you'd call an organized political party. Clearly, this made the series really quite expensive compared to, say, Knight Rider, where the main special effect was David Hasselhoff's hair. Early episodes had Automan principally appear at night until they could work out the best way to recreate the effects in daylight. Yes, you can do all this stuff on your computer now, but this was years ago. It's nearly dawn. The world is making toast, watching Good Morning America, brushing its teeth. I don't have the strength left to help you. I can feel three million toasters, waffle irons, and television sets turning on. There go the electric razors, the toothbrushes, and the heaters. I just don't know about that outfit. It's a little behind the times. Good. Good? I made my home base, Australia. 
Desiane's junior stars as Walter Nebiger, and he sometimes seems a little uncomfortable in the role. You'll never make the turn! Which is basically to explain the plot. You fix the burglary investigation to get Lyman and Co. to pull the armory job. Be frustrated by being kept off the street by Boyd. But I'll get you for this nebbish. Then he has to keep a lid on his sometimes wayward creation, Auto Man. Auto Man can change that. I've programmed him to be a, everything I ever dreamed of being as a policeman. <gasps> Say it ain't so! Walter's geeky side is toned down slightly so that he's able to hold his own in a fist fight and not have to rely 100% on Auto Man getting him out of trouble. Walter's someone keenly interested in computers and video game design, but as far as his abilities as a cop go, he's a bit like Rodney Dangerfield's watercolour self-portraits. He gets no respect. It's like an overgrown child on his first trip from home. Auto's feedback circuits make him curious about life and things. Oh no. Despite Arnez Jr. being the son of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnez, he never gets annoyed enough with Automan to tell him he's got some splaining to do. We're still gonna have trouble explaining you. Chuck Wagner is the self-consciously self-assured Automan is either annoyingly smug or just the right amount of silly hero. I look wonderful. If you do say so yourself. He's a mix of an old school superhero and a polished game show host displaying more than a hint of tongue in cheek. Yes, but look at my new suit. Wagner quickly grew into the role, making Auto Man a rather more charismatic character than Walter, playing the role with a glint in his eye, and that's only partially due to the special effects. Now that's what I call rude. <laughs> Gerald S. O'Loughlin starts off as the typical 80s shouting hard-ass police captain Boyd, but he does settle down a little as a person who's basically just distrustful of technology. Get back to your cage, boy! Now! Robert Lansing as Lieutenant Curtis seems to be trying his best to make a thankless role less thankless, basically playing the respectable traditional cop who pops up in one or two scenes an episode doing old school investigation, but one that invariably needs Walter and Auto Man to do their thing. Everybody, but I gotta be straight with you. Now. Most yeah. of the credit for this bus goes to you, Lieutenant. Heather McNair does well in an even more thankless role. Roxanne is in on Auto Man's origin since she basically saw the recap at the start of each episode. My name is Auto Man. Still, she spends a lot of the series with a surprised expression on her face, trying her darndest to keep Auto Man from being busted. Auto Man, what are you doing here? Do you realize anyone can just walk in and find you? Walter's been crushing on Roxanne. At the end of the series, we find out that she feels the same way. I don't want our friendship to get in the way of romance. But then that cock blocking prick Auto Man shows up. The cost of the show was very high, with episodes reportedly costing $1 million each, combined with ratings that were decent but not high enough to justify the cost, especially when they were scheduled against a blooper show that cost peanuts to make. ABC cancelled Auto Man after 12 episodes with one show left unaired. And with that, the show faded into a sort of obscurity. If you ask people about Auto Man, the answers you'll get will break down thusly. People who remembered it fondly, people who were aware of it, or people who think you're talking about furniture. There were Auto Man toys, which command huge prices today. So we're unofficially, officially, unofficially jumping in on the Auto Man bandwagon, such as it is, with the very poorly researched Stam Fine Auto Man Ottoman. need only know the extent of your penetration. Auto Man featured a lot of familiar faces for the era, but also a few interesting guest stars like Patrick McNee, Doug McClure, Michelle Phillips, Billy Drago, Delta Burke, and even pop singer Laura Branigan. The single best thing to come out of Auto Man, oh come on now, is easily the theme tune, written by Billy Hinch and longtime Larson musical collaborator Stu Phillips. It's the most 80s thing in a show that's so 80s you need to put a warning label on it, a warning label that reads, warning the 80s. It's a banger, it slaps, it bops and it beeps. I don't actually know what any of that means, but I think it means it's good. It's definitely an earworm, though maybe not as bad as those from SETI Alpha 5. Auto Man's stories revolve more around what cool or funny thing they can do with Auto Man rather than worrying about Walter. It could be Auto Man learning to disco dance. Do you dance? Have you ever seen John Travolta dance? Yes. Then you've seen me. Auto Man going undercover as a stripper. Or getting lost in soap operas. It would never work. We're from two different worlds. You're a hologram. You're not even real. 
Neither are the people in soap operas and they fall in love every 20 minutes. Or he's been watching too many vigilante cop movies. Mad Dog doesn't play by the rules. Sure I do. Only they're my rules. Yes, Automan is not 100% serious, and it's probably best described and enjoyed as an action comedy show. I've never met such a rude young man in all my days. Hmm. Not even when you were toast of the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I never. It's not what those linebackers used to tell me. Automan was a show that I've always been aware of, but I don't ever recall watching back in the day. So it's not a series that I have any great nostalgia for. What's with your collar? Radiation poisoning. I've watched the series for the first time as an adult, albeit an adult who still eats glue, plays with action figures, and puts playing cards in the spokes of my wheels. Pro tip, it does not work as well with cars as it does with a BMX. So how does Automan appeal to someone who would have been the target audience but hasn't been for some time? The pilot looked awful and cheesy, like a cheese pizza without the pizza part. I originally started writing a review with lines about, well, some fail shows just weren't very good, but I kept at it, and there was this tongue-in-cheek aspect to the show that emerged that really started to endear it to me. It seems every time I try to concentrate on something, my circuits get overloaded by Rachel's face. Maybe Automan is an acquired taste, like Vegemite Haggis. Get out of my office right now, Nebuchadnezzar, you hear what I'm saying? But you probably can't watch it without a smile creeping across your face. Oh, I'll bet there's nothing you're afraid of. Well, that's not true. There is one thing. What's that? A power failure. Automan being a naive goofball doofus combined with some over-the-top sight gags make a show that is still quite fun and entertaining. Ah, Walter, fancy meeting you here. Very fancy indeed, Otto. Since the show's cancellation, the surviving cast members have found fans still fondly remember the series. When I answer my fan mail, should I sign Otto Man or just plain Otto? Creator Glenn Larson felt that they may have moved too fast with cramming the show with Automan gags and abilities, but the show without Automan or the auto car would just be another action adventure series. The show doesn't really do much with its supporting characters, wasting the cast, which is a common trait of similar series. Should have taken that last left turn. Oh, we can still make it. <laughs> Automan either works for you or it doesn't. Like the guy mowing my lawn right now, which is somewhat concerning since I live on a houseboat. You've gone absolutely mad! No, you're thinking of Earl, the Willie Joe's long lost brother. Now he is crazy. I began watching Automan expecting a shallow and uninvolving take on 80s action adventure series, but left with a giant grin. I had a lot of fun watching this show for the first time. Also, that bloody theme tune has been stuck in my head for weeks. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below or check out some of our other videos.